This is a short instructional video explaining the complex triggering capabilities of the Intronix Logic Support USB Logic Analyzer. And we're going to start with some uh, of the easiest of the complex tri triggering. I go into the setup menu and I go down to the trigger menu. And we have a lot of options here, but we're going to work with just level A at this point. And we're going to work on triggering on the edge of a signal of the data that we already have. So I'm going to click edge occurs one time. I'm going to click apply and I'm going to come out to the waveform menu and I'm going to pick the rising edge of edge A. At this point I can take a single acquisition and my trigger is in the center of my screen and you'll notice that we have triggered exactly on a rising edge of count one and I'll hit an acquisition another time and you can see that we're on the rising edge of count one and I'll hit it another time and we're on the rising edge of count one. If I wanted to change this to the falling edge I could do that and trigger and you can see now that we're on the falling edge. So that's how you would trigger on the edges of signals. There are some more complex setups that are available like how many edges you want to have and then you can combine edges and other things that are here. We've already seen in the simple pattern uh, video an example of a pattern. Uh, another way to get a pattern without doing it from the menu, uh, from the waveform menu, is to come in here and say value of and equal to, and we could type in a 20 hex. I'm going to click apply to do that. And I want to let you know that when you come out here, you should make sure that in pattern A all the waveforms are don't cares when you do that. When we do a trigger, we should see that we trigger right at a hex value of 20 for the counter. And that's very similar to the pattern waveform recognition that we had before. The reason I wanted to show you that is when we go into trigger, we can also do things like greater than 20 and I'm going to click apply and when I do OK then you'll notice that this time I triggered on a hex 21 and this time I triggered on a hex 21 and this time I triggered on a hex 38 so any number greater than 20 would cause a trigger you have a bunch of other options in there uh, for values um, the other thing that we did with values is you have to select the group of signals that you want. Uh, we have counter 5 through 0. Those are the only signals that we're actually looking at for data. We also have some other options such as selecting for the duration of a signal and also we can select complex uh, where we look for a pattern and we look for a value greater than there. And you'll notice these and uh, text comes up here to explain, try and help you explain a little bit more of what's happening and what is the logic behind what's there. The last thing I want to show you is that you can also select um, on level A and level B. Or you can select whenever, enter, whenever levels A or B are satisfied in any order or whenever level A or B is satisfied, period. Uh, we're going to select the and. We're going to collect. We're going to choose a pattern. Uh, we're going to set this up on the waveform menu this time, and in level B, we're going to select a pattern. Also, I'm going to apply that. Click OK, and you notice that we have pattern A and edge A uh, columns here, but we don't have pattern B and edge B. If I right-click on these columns and I say insert column and I'm going to insert a pattern B and then I'm going to insert a pattern uh, an edge B also uh, it shows you how you can insert everything that you want in here if it isn't available for you and you can just drag these over and put them in any order you want so we said that we we're going to select a trigger that looks for a pattern for A first we're going to look for this pattern and after that pattern occurs, then we have to find this pattern. So what I'm really going to look for in a trigger is this value first, then this value second, then my logic port will trigger and start to store data. So if I hit this, 
and do an acquisition, we should see it trigger at data zero in the waveforms, and it does. And every time I hit this, I should see it occur at data zero. But remember that it would have had to find this pattern A waveform first and this pattern B waveform second. Uh, this is probably one example where counter waveforms aren't the best thing to do. So this shows you advanced triggering capabilities that we have in logic support. There's a lot more logic to this here. You can fool around with all the setups in the trigger mode, setup window, and you can set up some very complex triggering so that you get to see your data start and storage uh, for what happened in your waveforms before and after that point just based on the setup that you have.